just imagine yourself being a dark-skinned black girl and plus size as well. Trying to find your way in this world. Trying to find love. Just trying to be you. But you get pushed out every time because you notice that nobody is going to change. I'm black. I got to come out. This is my secret, okay? I, for a long time, have tried to hide this, but... My melanin capacity is actually surprisingly high. I identify all the time as black, and uh, there's nothing else you could say about it, okay? That's just what it is. No, okay. Obviously, this wo this woman, this girl, is going through it right now, and I, you know, I, I can see that she's having some troubles, um, you know, crying in the bathroom or wherever this is, but... Um, the problems that I'm seeing a lot is that you, you can't change being black and I don't know what she's having a problem with when it comes to being black. I guess, you know, it, traditionally speaking, when it comes to the dating market, black women are seen as the most undesirable group of women, which is very surprising since me identifying personally as a snow bunny. I've only ever dated black women. Seriously, that is. Of course, I've talked to women that were white or other uh, species of women that there were other g g genders of colors and things such and so forth. But I've only ever dated women that were ebony ebony dark skinned women and um i don't really see because like, i know a lot of guys will go oh yeah dog black women are disgusting bro they always act the same way they always acted like they know better than me and they have edumacations and stuff and i always think that's good right you want to you want a girl that knows what she's doing you want a girl that like has her shit together and all that other stuff by the way can we just take a minute to compliment davina today beautiful 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 girly um, but I don't know what the, the blackness has to do with anything, but the weight most definitely could be changed though. If you are having problems specifically in the dating market and you think that, I don't know, the weight is negatively affecting you. There's a crazy solution to this. I know it's going to sound kind of crazy to say this, but ready for it. You ready? Brace yourself. Lose weight. <laughs> I know. I know. It's crazy. I know it's crazy, but the, the loss of weight would make you tremendously more attractive, tremendously more attractive because if you're trying to appease men, Men and uh, men are predominantly visual creatures, right? It, it's only obvious that you would go and try to maximize the looks as much as possible. And then also, in general, if you were going for women, women also like things that look good, you know? So MK bags and so on and so forth. So you, you, you losing weight would uh, obviously help that as well. Just imagine nobody wants to talk to you. Crazy. Only when they need you. Imagine. I don't think that's a fat black woman thing. I think that's like an everybody thing. You probably want people that are around you that just want to have conversations with you. If you're groups of friends that, if you have groups of friends that only want to talk to you when they need something, that's not a group of friends. That's just people that are really, really terrible, disgusting individuals. I would not be friends with those people, especially family members. Don't feel compelled to be around family members because they are your family members if it's negatively affecting you. It's not a good thing to have people that only use you consistently. Now, don't get me wrong conversation in and of itself is using somebody but usually it's a mutual thing and i'm using you and you using me and like you're having a deep in-depth conversation so on and so forth but you shouldn't have to have friends that are those type of friends those are not good friends everybody calling you is beautiful you're so beautiful you're so gorgeous oh, it must be nice but yet you don't see it you start to get if you're getting got okay i'm gonna keep it a buck with you okay i know this is not a dating video but i'm gonna keep it a buck with you if a guy is telling you because I, I see this a lot if a guy is telling you oh you're so pretty you're so gorgeous you know you, you look so amazing today i don't don't think of that as anything other than this guy probably just wants to smell your vagina and that's okay because guess what that's like most men on the internet and most people on the internet are men because I've, I've only ever really talked to the amount of times that I've said, okay, this is most definitely a woman. And then I got a BBC picture when I asked to see what she looks like, not even a vagina picture, just a, let me see what you look like. And then I get a straight up BBC picture. I remember one time a dude had sent me a BBC picture, right? This was his penis. And then he went like this, like that was his penis picture. He just sent it like that. And I'll give him a for effort, but I'm not attracted to BBCs inherently. So Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point I'm making is if a guy's hitting you up and he's going, you're pretty, you're beautiful, whatever, that doesn't really insignify anything, especially knowing that guys are like predominantly driven by sex, especially in an age where most dudes are beating off like at fucking 12 and watching porn like way before they fucking should. And we're all driven by like pornography and things like that. So of course, most dudes, especially dudes that are in the younger brackets are going to have a hard time 
um, having emotional connections with women and maybe feel like they're just going to be utilizing them for whatever. And here's the thing. If guys are willing to have sex with like apple pies, and I'm not even talking about like good homemade apple pies. I'm talking about the apple pies you can get at McDonald's for like a dollar. Well, they used to be a dollar. Now, I, I think now they're like a dollar fifty. But if you're willing to slip your, slip your meat in a McDonald's apple pie, your vagina is like, whoa, it's like leagues ahead. You got like way more, you got way more cred than the, the McDonald's apple pie. It's not, that one's not even made with care. I guess that's kind of the appeal of having sex with a McDonald's apple pie though. It's not like the care involved, the love, the affection that went into making that. It's just the fact that it's dirty and disgusting. That's, that's, that's the reason why you're having sex with the McDonald's apple pie. But, uh, don't think that it's like anything special for a guy to hit you up and go like, you're so pretty. Don't even take it serious. Don't even take it serious. It's whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? If a guy hits you up and goes, you're pretty, you're beautiful, be like, oh, thanks. Thank you so much. That's great. But don't take it any, don't take it to heart. And like, don't think it like puts any value on what that guy is saying. Yes. But yet, you don't see it. You start to get irritated because you don't feel it. If you felt it, you would have had a partner by now. Just imagine being jealous. Of the ones closest to you because they have happy relationships. I feel like people don't understand that happy relationships come with a lot of conflict. Just inherently. Like being in a relationship. I know because I've been in relationships for long periods of time. Longest relationship has been four years. And I know. And I know that you know probably if you've been in relationships as long as that. Is that it takes a lot of deliberate effort. It takes a lot of work to maintain that type of relationship. It takes a lot of responsibility. And it's not always going to be happy. There are going to be moments when you want to call that person a cunt and a bitch because they're arguing for no reason. But you know they're arguing for no reason because that's just what they do. And they're not – they're inherently flawed individuals in the same way that you just kind of want to sit there and play Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel for five hours a day. I know it's not something you want. But – it takes it takes time and effort. You know, you have to actually put in a lot of work to make this shit work and compromise and things such and so forth. It takes a big person to make relationships work, 100%. And now I don't mean people that are in relationships because it's easy. I don't mean that people are like, oh, yeah, I'm never going to address or talk about or let, never. Um, we're never ever going to break up because it's hard to break up because like being in a relationship is easier than not being in a relationship because you've been in this relationship for so long, you just might as well keep being in it. That's not good. Do not do that. Um... If you're, if you're with somebody, you should make sure it's for the right reasons and not for some bullshit reason like you don't want to leave them because it'd be more work to leave them. That's terrible. But very – I don't know how old this person is, but a very skewed perception of what relationships are. Of the ones closest to you because they have happy relationships. Stop you comparing yourself. <laughs> because everybody cares about what people think, even me. I'm not the strongest soldier out here. Even then again, I know that I'm, it's just hard to be who I am and what I want to do. You got to wipe your nose a little bit. I don't know, like, uh, you got some Kleenex in there or something like that. Here's the thing. Okay, I'm going to keep it a buck. Not the place. Not the place for it. Internet, not the place. I don't know how many times I got to say this. You crying on the internet is going to get, uh, I'm sure, a lot of support. A lot of people, oh my god, yes, queen, slay, you know, speak your truth, whatever, sure. But... I mean, it's just like, why would you ever put yourself in a compromising position like this? I just never understood it. Doesn't make sense to me at all. Like, you're, you're literally a, a gazelle. And you're running up to the group of lions. And sure, some of these lions are good people. I'm sure they wash their hands. And they wear the same color socks. And they know how to tie ties. But the majority of those lions are going to call you fat, ugly, and hormonal. 100%. That's just what it is. Because that's what the internet is. And... I don't know why you would go up to those 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 particular individuals and give them the fuel they need in order to make fun of you. And that's what it is. I'm not going to make fun of her. Obviously, she's going through a lot of trauma and uh, whatever, dude, and she's crying about it. But it's not the place for it. Go to your friends. Go to your family. Not the place. Stop it, okay? And by the way, helpful information, helpful advice. If you want to have an increased chance of having men or people in general that want to be attracted to you. This goes for anybody, okay? Good relationship advice for anybody. Here comes this serious dose of black pill. Ready for it? Be healthy. Can you believe that? Can you believe being healthy is like a primary primary reason for people being with you? Because odds are, if you're healthy, there's going to be a lot of other indicators that are going to make you more attractive. Usually when you're healthy, you're in shape. You're fit. You have muscle. Usually, that means you're you're responsible for yourself. There's other things probably going for you because usually, if somebody's healthy, they have a lot of other things going for themselves because they're mid maxing. So these things are indicators for attractiveness. So if you want to increase your chances of finding somebody to be with, which which 
is fine. Don't act like you don't want to be with somebody. Don't act like I don't want to be with somebody. We all we all yearn for that individual that's going to complete us, even though you are a complete package, but you just want somebody a little bit on top of you, if you know what I'm talking about. It's okay. Don't look down like you're, you know, like, oh, I, I don't deserve this or I, I, I shouldn't want this. It's okay to want these things. It's fine. But just be realistic in these situations. Being healthy is going to increase your chances tremendously. And crying on the internet, not going to do that. Um, it's just hard to be who I am and what I want to do. It's well, so hard when bit. you have Ugh. so many push And I'm sorry I had to be that girl crying on the phone. A friend of mine sent me this video on body positivity. Let's talk about it. My thing isn't really body positivity. I like to say body appreciation because my body is my job. And it does amazing things for me. And yet I still, in my head, don't love it all the time. I still step on the scale sometimes and want that number to be lower, even though I lift insane weights and Damn. I run. So we grow you think, up. You think she's on the sauce? Well, you think she's on the sauce? She's most definitely taking something, dude. Thinking that our bodies are just there to be judged Look and at looked at crap. and not fully taking in what it's actually capable of. And that, for me, rugby showed me exactly what my body's capable of. So the friend and I have an interesting back and forth conversation about what this means in relationship to body positivity and body appreciation, body neutrality, any plethora of labels that we can attach to any movement that we participate in. My first reaction to this is I think that this person has a misunderstanding of what body positivity as a movement is or is meant to Usually these people have absolutely no idea what body positivity actually is. For some reason, they always want to incorporate being fat in body positivity. And it sure can be incorporated in there if you fall in this very niche bracket of people that just cannot change their weight for any particular reason at all. Like maybe you're a disability, maybe you have a disability or maybe it's like. I don't know, you're trapped on a mountain somewhere and you physically can't move yourself or you have, you're missing arms and legs. There are cases and scenarios where you physically cannot lose weight, which is okay. In those particular scenarios, accept it. It is what it is. Get on with your life. That's okay. But for some reason, these people love to throw in fat people in the group of body positivity, which is one of the reasons why body, body positivity has fundamentally failed in the last few years because it's been hijacked. They always say that it's been hijacked by thin white women, which is funny, um, but I think it's been hijacked by plus size obese influencers, dude. People that come out there and they just want to be incorporated in anything they can be. They'll take in everything. Their greed has no bounds and they're going to they're gonna be in every single organization whatever you want to call it dude because they have no they have no boundaries dude and this is the reason why i think it's failed to be and also i think whatever if a different label is more affirming for you that's fine too at the end of the day we do need to have some conversations about how it is we understand talk about and think about body positivity as a movement and it's, it's simple right like body positivity was is 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 off the belief that if you have something about you that you cannot change that's all right. You don't have to be perfect. Being perfect is not even something that people should strive for. It should just be better. Just be better. Just be better. You know, like Kratos said, don't be sorry. Be better. That's what it comes down to, okay? It's always something you can do to make yourself better. Now, if you're missing a leg, arm, or, you know, whatever, it's all right. You know, it's, it's okay. You don't have to have those things to be a better person, to be a good person. You just have to acknowledge them and move on. That's what it's all about. And body positivity is most definitely not about accepting obesity in your life, given the fact that 99.9% .9 of people cannot be obese. It does, it's not a debilitating condition, not a chronic illness that's going to affect you for the rest of your life. I mean, maybe it will because these people are chronically always telling themselves that they can't do anything to change themselves when in reality, you can't. There are plenty of things that you can do. It's called a calorie deficit. It's called calories in, calories out. It's called understanding nutrition. It's called going on a walk and stop complaining about the fact that your toilets are too small. It's that simple relationship towards the liberation of bodies and the liberation of fat bodies plus size bodies bodies that are not i don't know why they always do the liberation of these particular bodies being in the west being in america you have absolutely no grounds to talk about the non-liberation of your fat bodies are you serious dude we we practically invented fat people and i'm sure there are going to be people that go david no we didn't there's always been fat people sure there have always been fat people but you cannot tell me that fat people from like 200, 300, 400, go back even further, those years ago compared to now are anywhere close to equivalent. Are you serious? Not even close, okay? People fat, people that are fat now are a way, a ways fatter than people that there were fat back in the day. And the amount of fat people too is significant compared to that, that, that number. So 
if your argument is there's always been fat people, I don't disagree with you, but there is no other place besides the West that does it better for fat people than the West. That's just what it is, okay? We're the most accepting. We're the most lenient when it comes to those particular aspects. We give you accessibility tools and things such and so forth. And I'm not saying you can't complain. You should complain. Go ahead, complain. But I think it's just so incredibly interesting when they say things like liberation of fat people or liberations of fat bodies. The only way I could possibly think about liberating fat bodies is by not being fat anymore. So why do you guys always have to use this choice of words? It's so it's so it's so crazy how these people have to use these particular types of words to justify their bodies, man. It doesn't make any sense, dude. Whatever adjective you want to use, it's just like always bullshit, dude. Just lose some fucking weight and you'll have the ability to walk upstairs. Considered normative. The friend says that she kind of likes this approach to body appreciation. One, because she sees a sense of kind of duty to your body and to taking care of it and second because it gets away from this idea of bodies being good so i go on to explain that your body doesn't have to be good it just has to be good enough for you it just has to be healthy enough to operate within society well enough to like i don't know have a job fucking walk around even people you know it's crazy is that I see these people that have no legs, people that cannot walk, being very productive members of society. And sure, they can complain about things like, oh, there's no elevator access here, this and that. Dude, I remember being on a college campus. I've never been to college, but I remember there was this girl. She was blind, okay? And every day, she would still make it to class. Never complained. Never. Never complained. And sometimes she would trip. Sometimes she would fall because... They would change shit up, right? The hallways would be different design. They'd maybe put something in the hallway, like a trash can or something like that. She would trip over it because she's not familiar with the setup and things like that and so forth. Never complained. Never. And she did her class. She graduated. Beautiful story. Amazing story. I just think it's so interesting sometimes where I see people that have any reason to actually complain. They have every reason to. And they don't. And then I see people like this complaining consistently about not being able to have access to elevators or two two plane tickets or two, two, two seats on a plane and not being able to walk upstairs and not being able to properly wash themselves and not having menses that like them and things such and so forth. It's just such an interesting dichotomy of people that I see. Like the person that can and should be the person that realistically complains is not. And then here you are complaining about shit that is ridiculous. Like you could just lose weight. And instead, you just choose not to. As if this girl could just turn on her eyes and boom, she could just start walking around willy nilly fine. That, that, that really is what body positivity is supposed to be, right? It's not supposed to be an idea of bodies being good or bad. It's actually about rejecting that dichotomy in relationship to bodies and rejecting the idea that we can ascribe value to somebody's body based on our visual interaction with one. Some people, I don't know why these people have an issue with people having more value depending on what their bodies look like. Like we have entire industries dedicated to how people look i mean models for instance right i mean maybe not so much anymore given the fact that we literally have people like jordan underwood or even people that have like let's be honest here dude people that are not supposed to be models that are models which is fine like anybody can do anything i guess nowadays super motivational but we have like bodybuilder performances where people literally go on stage specifically to judge based off of how they look or even like of models instagram models people that look very very aesthetically pleasing for men to beat off to for $5.99 $5.99 a month or whatever you want to pay for to see somebody's vagina, which is fine. Like, I don't have an issue with guys going there and spending their money on women to beat off, right? That's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If that's what you want to spend your money on, who am I to tell you who or what you should be spending your money on? Go ahead, do it. I think it's very sad, though, for a lot of these guys because given the only reasons why they're doing it is because they have no way of otherwise interacting with women, which is very, very sad, okay? But I don't have any, I have no problem with people buying OnlyFans or anything like that. But um, I don't think I think it's very ignorant of a statement to say that people don't have value based off their bodies. There's a reason why pretty privilege exists. There's a reason why people have incentivizing factors to get jobs or other things like that. If you are very, very attractive, it's very ignorant to assume otherwise. Bribe value to somebody's body based on our visual interaction with one. And we can certainly still have a What is this jacket you're wearing, dude? Why do you like these these like shoulder pads make it look like you're Danny DeVito from Batman. You know what I'm talking about? That old Batman with Michael Keaton? That's okay, whatever, dude. I feel like whatever, man. Visual interaction with one. And we can certainly still have a duty to do the best that we can to care for our bodies and do the best that we can to um, appreciate and be grateful and show gratitude to our bodies for. How can you say that? But then, like, you're obese. 
like, it, are you working under the assumption that it's not possible for you to lose weight? Because if you're actually serious about things that you can do in order to appreciate your body in the best possible way, and weight loss isn't even the flavor on your lips, that should automatically count as a red flag. That is impossible that you can sit there and say you're trying to help your body, you're trying to appreciate your body, and don't actually appreciate your body, but like, I don't know, put on deodorant more frequently or wash your toenails slightly more compared to what you usually do, but never look at actually losing weight as a way to appreciate your body. I don't understand why these people have an issue so hard with looking at weight loss as a like a good thing. They always want to look at it as like a super bad, disgusting, never good thing when in reality it would benefit you tremendously. Like your hormones are incredibly out of balance when you're obese. We notice, right? Like you know that your estrogen is probably like producing like way more. You're probably having a ton of issues with your joints and all this other stuff. If you lost weight, you wouldn't have to deal with any of that stuff. And guess what? Your body would be super appreciative of that. All omega level appreciated of that. For the way in which it has gotten, um, appreciate and be grateful and show gratitude to our bodies for the way in which it has gotten us through different periods of time. I think that's fine to do that, to look back and be like, you know, this really did get me through a good portion of my time. That's true. Go ahead. Appreciate it. It should be looked at your body in the sense of like this really, I really did get, it's a really weird way of looking at it though. Like, I don't know why in 2024, we're looking back at our bodies as like a, uh, oh, yeah, this really got me through a good portion of my life. It's not like a car. Like, it's your body, right? I don't know why. It's like, it'd be one thing if you were like, yeah, I, I bought this hoopty when I was 19 years old. The door didn't actually open. The heater was constantly on. I had to start the car with, like, you know what I'm talking about, the, the, the battery jumper because it never turned on. You can look back at those moments and be like, yeah, this car really got me where I need to go. But now I got a Bugatti, you know? Like, it's much better in that particular sense, right? You could do that. But like the way you're looking at it right now is like your body is like a A, B, C, D when it, when it actually what it is is just like a spectrum, you know, and it fluctuates, right? So you can appreciate your body here, sure, but like that's not a reason to not like see the upward trajectory of how great your body is going to be later on. You understand? I don't know. It's just weird the way they describe themselves. In our life. So as we work through this, we kind of come to the conclusion that she says body positivity kind of needs a rebrand. Agreed. And I say to her, I don't disagree entirely. I think you guys got to get out of body positivity in general, dude. You guys are doing that shit a, a major disservice. You guys already have fat acceptance. You guys already have fat liberation. You guys already have all these organizations. I don't know why you have to feel the need to go into body positivity as if it's like even welcoming for you guys in general. Like it literally conflicts with your entire ideology wholly. 100% holy. But also the important thing to remember is in a lot of mainstream body positivity campaigns where you see um, folks who have skin disorders, who have physical disabilities, amputations, um, who express their identities religiously different, um, when those campaigns happen, every time it happens, they get weaponized. So things just become really tough when what happens is those mainstream body positivity campaigns become tools to attempt to discipline. So instead of building bridges, those mainstream body positivity campaigns become tools to tell fat women and plus size bodies and larger bodied people that they don't belong in. They don't belong. You guys are literally by definition not supposed to be in the body positivity movement. I don't know why you feel the need so heavily to be a part of something that literally is not supposed to be inclusive of you. I mean, it's fine. Like they'd be like me going into the the fat con, like, you know, fat con 2024 or whatever. It'd be like me walking to fat con, like knocking on the door of like, Hey, I'm fat. Like, I'm just really, really dense. Like, let me in. They'll look at me with their heads turned. Like, no, we, you're not, this is not for you. Right. They don't want me in there just in the same way that you're not probably welcome. I'm not saying that you wouldn't be accepted. I'm sure there are tons of ignorant people in the body positivity pe community that'd be like, Oh yeah, 100% we'll let you in. No, that's crazy. That'd be like literally the Jedi looking at emperor Palpatine and be like, Come on in, man. Come on in. Even though your ideology completely conflicts with ours, come on in. Hot, right, big hug, big hug. That's what it's like. Because by definition, body positivity is accepting things that you cannot change about yourself. Yet you are literally defined by something that you can change wholly. And you're not doing anything about it. Why the fuck do you think that this is going to be accepted for you? That's crazy. I mean, like I said, I'm sure there are people within the body positivity movement that would accept you in, but those people in my mind are probably very flawed individuals that have absolutely no idea why they're even in the organization to begin with. It's like anytime, 
like fat acceptance organization, fat liberation organizations on its face is probably okay. Like the general speaking sense of it, right? Be accepting of your fat body. Fine. But that shouldn't mean that you should embrace it in a very whole sense of I can never do anything to change myself. I'm perfect exactly the way they are because that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing people literally defining themselves based off of these like definitions that don't make any sense anymore. Like you guys are you guys are going to have to make up new words because if you were serious about fat acceptance, you would also be serious about the fact that being overweight is not good. And that even though you're accepting yourself in the way that you are based off your fatness, that doesn't mean that you can't change your fatness or that it wouldn't be incredibly beneficial for you in order to change that thing. Anyway. Body positivity movements that they were instrumental in starting. It's just like, I don't care. I, I don't care that you think that fat women were like super in instrumental because of an organization. There are plenty of organizations that were started by Group A and then years and decades along that line, it no longer is the same organization that was founded by those people traditionally, if you know what I'm talking about. Like there are plenty of things that have those the, that, that are founded like that. So um, even though you have fat people that were starting that, which I don't even think that's true. When I was doing my research, I didn't see anything about fat women. I saw a whole bunch of Vietnam veterans and wives that were doing that. I didn't see anything about fat women though. So I think you're probably wrong on that one too for the liberation like i shouldn't have to know more than this person i just really shouldn't have to and the fact that this person is speaking so confidently and making virtue signaling so hard as if we're shitting on fat people for being in fat acceptance or body positivity is actually hilarious given the fact that you don't even have you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about like you're just saying words at this point and you're like pawning it off as fact when in reality none of the shit you're saying is factual fat bodies i have a fat gene um, it's like you have an ugly gene. Damn. You are very ugly. There's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> For you, you are ugly. Damn. Okay? You are ugly and dumb. Damn. You are brainless. Which you are very, you have shit for brains. Uh -huh. You have shit for brains, okay? And you're also ugly. Damn, so dude. How many times are you going to say I'm ugly, man? You have a lot of plastic surgery. I just want to point it out. There's a lot of plastic surgery here. I don't think, like, it's okay to say that that you think you look better than me. I pr she probably looks better than me, organically speaking. But if your face doesn't move when you smile, and I don't know if you're actually smiling or just like, I don't know, going through some kind of trauma, I it's not a good thing to sit there and go, you're ugly, you're ugly, you're ugly. Like 90% of your face is not even real. So you're not going to do much with your life. And that is very Damn. sad for you. Probably fat too. So you probably have the fat gene. Damn. For me, personally, I have only the fat gene. Okay, fat. But you're like, what, dude? Well, you got like liposuction in your face. You got like a facelift when you were 22. A gene can be worked around if you have a brain. Here are three more benefits of being fat. I love it, dude. I love it when people talk super shit. I just wish that somebody was there to also talk shit to her back because I love, I love the competition of talking shit. I love seeing the intersection of, yeah, you're fucking ugly. Your brain is disgusting. And, and then I want somebody to come back and be like, well, your face doesn't move and you have like bricks inside your skin. I would love that. But never anybody there to counter the arguments which not really for arguments me, how can you sit there and say all this stuff blasphemous stuff shitting on your fellow man while you have the lord the lord the cross upon your skin personally i have only the fat gene okay the fat gene can be worked what kind of genes you think that is like levi's uh some lululemon maybe Found if you have a brain here are three more benefits of being fat if you're tired of only hearing why fatness is so awful then listen up Hey, I'm Vinny, aka Fierce Fatty, and I help people unlock- Look at this jewelry, dude. What is this, like, XXXXX large jewelry and just tied it up 15 times? An anti-fat bias. By facilitating diversity training for organizations who want to add size inclusion to their DEI. I, I really hate diversity training, dude, because it's like, what even is diversity training? And the fact that so many people feel like they need to do this in order to appease some kind of company or board or their HR team in order to get, like, proper- Like, okay, I get it. If your like workforce is 95% men and they all like graduated from a solid men organization or something like that, sure, there might be a little bit of sexism there. And then you might need to come in and go, no, guys, not how it is. But oftentimes I feel like when I hear people say things like diversity training or like teach men not to sexually assault or things like that, I always think like, do you think that <laughs> do you think that people are just like purposely racist or do you think that people are purposely like sexually assaulting and things like that like i'm sure there are plenty of people but to sit there and say teach people not to do this like are you inferring that we are teaching people to do this i think most people have like this very skewed idea of how terrible it is in america dude even though there are terrible disgusting awful people here in america in terms of like very very biased very very discriminatory people here in america most people here in america are very 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 accommodating for everybody super nice people 
Um, you will come across like a few crazy people that are like very, very intolerant and things such and so forth. But I think in general speaking, America is like pretty solid on the fact that we're like really open to most people. But I really want to know what her diversity training would be. Like accept fat people for the way they are. Jessica can't even get out of her fucking seat. And you're talking about accept her? We need to be in the, the meeting 35 minutes ago. She can't even get up. She got to like scoot her chair over to the meeting. My efforts. Understanding that there are benefits to being fat is going to chip away at that. What do you, what benefits? What benefits are there to being fat? What is, what are you talking about? What? Like being used as a mop too? Anti-fat bias that we all have swirling around in our head. There are so many benefits to being fat and the first three yeah. were covered in part one. This is part two. And let's start with number four. Many fat people have a big belly. That's yeah, definitely it. Yeah. Having a big belly is 110% a benefit. Oh, a cup holder. You got a cup holder for your gut. Your belly button it is nine inches deep. Guess what? Straw. Put straw right in there. You know you got people living in there. You could suck up the people that are in your belly button, dude. Your gut. But you, let's say this. What if you fall down? You're not going to ever hit your face. Because guess what? Your gut is going to be like a, a permanent parachute or like a, a safety bag right in front of you. Just fall down and just boom. Or maybe, I guess, maybe you like tip forward a little bit okay look well, i'm interested in seeing where how much of a benefit it is to have covered a in part one this is part two and let's start with number four many fat people have a big belly and you know what that means shelf snack a big snack shelf snack shelf okay yeah that's beautiful what a fucking beautiful thing to what if you're telling me a benefit of being fat is to have a shelf on your body and you think that's somehow the buying point wow I mean, that's interesting. That's real. That's real crazy, dude. I feel like at this point, I shouldn't even be bothering making jokes. I mean, this person's automatically making these fucking jokes. Built in table right at the perfect location. What do you mean the perfect? First of all, it's it's a table that's like moving on its own. It's like when you sit down and there's a table there and you like move slightly, all your shit's going to fucking fall off unless your your fucking gut is somehow like bricked up constantly. I don't think you're going to have a good time. And also, not all guts are created equal. Some guts are like slopping out through the sides you know what i'm talking about very uncomfortable to see by the way and like you know when you lay down as a woman and your your boobs sometimes they slide underneath your armpits and you don't know where they went and you have to like look for them like oh where'd they go it's like that with your stomach right your stomach is here and then you lay down and it's just like, and it slides down to the side kind of like uh like those old sands you know those sands that are kind of like magnetic or whatever and they would just like you put them down and you touch them and they just kind of slide out from underneath or it's like oblique you know oblique with the material oblique how when you touch it, it gets hard. It's like that when you don't touch it. Like it's it's tough, but then when you lay down, you you just completely feel good. Or you're just relaxing. Your gut just kind of outside. Whatever, dude. Um, but it's a terrible reason, dude. I don't know what the hell you're even talking about by saying this. I can't even believe this is a buying point for you. That'd be like going to a, 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 a guy that's trying to sell you a car, right? And you're like, yo, tell me some benefits of this car. Like I'm looking to buy a new automobile, something that's going to get me from A to B, comfort, all this other stuff. And he goes... Um, yeah, so, uh, this car is great. It doesn't have tires. Yeah, you want it? Yeah, 70K. Yeah, 30, 30, 30% interest rate. Number five, being fat means that you have a built-in bigot filter. If someone doesn't want to be friends with you or date you just because of your body size, then you have outed their bias. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, I mean, so you're telling me... You're telling me that because now I'm gutted up. Dude, these are really not buying points, bro. These are terrible fucking points. So now I have a built-in way to have people not like me because I'm going to call them a bigot because they don't want to be around me because they're fat. First of all, how many people do you know that are honestly real deal not trying to be friends with people because they're fat? Like, can we just... Uh, how many people? Not many, right? Not many. Okay, there's that. I mean, you probably talk about dating because not many people want to slide their whatever, their long john silver in a random crevice that may or may not be a vagina. You have no idea. In those particular senses, but if you're telling me that, how is this buying points? Like, how can you sit here and tell me that these are benefits? Are you serious? Have less friends? Beneficial? All right, dude. Great. Thin people don't have that same advantage and often accidentally end up dating. What is number seven? Like, what is a benefit? Number six, right? Smell bad. Then you know that people are going to be, people are going to be biased because you walk by them and you're going to hear that, mm, and that's going to immediately turn them off and they're not going to want to be around you because you smell so inherently bad because you have, I don't know, skin flakes and orange peels and KFC underneath your, your gut folds and things like that. So you smell bad. It's a benefit. It's a benefit, guys, because guess what? You don't want to be around people that have noses. You want to be around like Voldemort peoples, like people without noses because those people are going to be more tolerant. Like these are, what kind of buying points are these? 
body bigots. And body only... bigots is insane, dude. You have to come up with these names. Find dude. out when their partner starts complaining when they put on weight. Pro tip, if someone is bigoted about body size. Dude, if you're dating somebody and they put on weight and you don't have a problem, that's a red flag. You should have an issue with that. That's not a good thing. So like all her, so what you're basically telling me is all this stuff is beneficial. Like it's all good. You should look at this stuff as like, yes, I am actually seeing the the problems with being fat. They probably have a lot of other biases too. Yeah, true. Number six. Like racism. So like if you see your wife gaining weight, you're probably racist too. And you're probably like super homophobic and you probably don't even like women either. You're probably just like gay actually. Yeah, you're probably gay. If your wife gains weight and you have a problem with that, you're gay. You're gay. And you hate black people. How do you feel now? How do you feel now? Gay? So we are hard to kidnap. Dude, it's just like, you know, you guys come up with things that are just ri really ridiculous, man. How often do you think you're getting kidnapped? Can we talk about that for a second? How often? How many times have you gotten kidnapped today? Not much, right? <sighs> I haven't gotten yet. I'm waiting. But then you also got the fact that this is not even like you're so big that the person that's trying to kidnap you can't lift you up. Therefore, it's a good... Man, dude, you guys, you guys have to stretch really fucking hard to find reasons, dude. I can't even believe this shit. What are you even saying? I can't be kidnapped. My passive abilities are way too much. Damn. Why try and grab someone that might weigh more than you? It's just too much effort. We have a built-in crime deterrent on our body. You're fat, dude. You're fat. If you, I can't even believe you're even saying this, dude. You're really out here claiming this to be a benefit? You're so big you can't get lifted up? You're so big you can't even lift your own leg up the stairs? Like, this is not a benefit. This is just nothing. Like, sure, in this niche scenario of somebody that's, like, really crazy and he wants to, like, abduct you. Sure. Yes. Benefit. I guess. Sure. If that's what you want to look at it. I mean, you can always do other things to mitigate that. Mace. A gun. You can do other things. Sure. But I guess it's built in. So, I mean, it's not even technically built in. You had to do a lot to get to that point. But sure. Whatever. So, you got a built in, a non-kidnapping detector or whatever the fuck you want to call that shit. But, like, dude, you can't even walk upstairs. You know, like, wouldn't it be more better? Like, how often? Okay, hear me out. How often are you getting kidnapped and compare that to how often are you walking upstairs? That's all I'm saying, dude. Averages. If you'd like the full list of all the benefits, go check out my podcast, The Fierce Fatty Podcast, episode 128. Sad. Just Google Fierce Fatty Podcast 128 and you'll find it. I would love to be on her podcast, man. I'd love it so good. So many. Remember, if your organization's diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts don't include fat liberation. You're doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing. Then you're missing out on a huge portion of the employee population. So let's fix it. Definitely, let's fix it. Super fix it. Ultra fix it. Damn. Damn, dude. She has a big ass mouth. God damn. This is some kink genre right here. You know dudes are beating off to this. You know it. This burgers? video immediately stuck out to me as a great example of thin privilege. Now, this isn't anything against the original creator. This is her shtick. It's every one of her videos, and everyone has a right to do what they want with their own body. But just imagine if someone in a bigger body had made a video like this. What would be the response? Would their comment section look like this? Or like- They're different. They're just different. So like, if you see somebody that's overweight eating crazy amounts of food, they're already seeing the trauma on their body. Therefore, it's going to be more of a risk for them to eat that food. You understand? Like. You do understand that there are differences for different people, right? Like, not everything's going to apply to everybody equally. You understand that? Like, somebody that's working on a roof has a higher likelihood of falling off a roof compared to you that's never been on a roof in, like, ever. You understand? In the same way that if you're very, very fat and you're eating a lot of food, you're at an increased risk of suffering complications because of those things compared to somebody that's not fat. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm just, I just, you know, I just, I just gotta say it. Like this? No, they would look like this. And I know that because I pulled these comments from another mukbang creator who makes the same kind of videos, but has committed the crime of being in a larger body. Because they're, okay bro. Now I don't endorse or glorify binge eating, but I do endorse kindness and human decency. If you endorse kindness and human decency, then you should be honest with the person that's eating like shit and they're very overweight. I'm not saying it's good on either side, but at least the person that's thin has more leeway and they can eat for longer periods of time before they start seeing the trauma of the other person's already seeing and still eating this crazy amounts of food anyway guys we're gonna end the video here if you enjoyed today's video i'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like comment subscribe sharing the video all those things i'd appreciate tremendously uh. so um if you watch the video in its entirety leave it down below by typing in lace 
because I have laces right here, for shoe laces for my boots that I'm going to be replacing soon. And these were like very cheap. I think these are like two bucks, three bucks or something like that. I bought them at Walmart. I only got like two things from Walmart. Can you believe that? Like it's just two shoelaces, literally. This is what I got from Walmart. Can you believe it? I went to Walmart and I couldn't find anything. So I just bought shoelaces. I don't know, man. I feel like I'm giving, I, I just, I don't know. My life sucks. I don't know. But anyway, guys, it doesn't matter. You're beautiful people. You're all amazing, spectacular. I like your shoes today. Wow, your shoes look really good. Super spectacular, amazing, nice looking shoes. Anyway, those are very nice, but we're getting the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter, my Discord, my second channel where I upload stream highlights. If you want to check out any of that stuff, feel free to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.